was the destruction of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore some sort of a warning for America? Michael Snyder reports. Less than two weeks before the most ominous sign in the entire history of the United States appears above our heads, we're talking about the Great American Eclipse of 2024, a bridge named after the author of the text of the U.S. National Anthem has collapsed after a key support structure was rammed by a massive cargo vessel. The Star Spangled Banner is the best known national anthem on the entire planet, and it's one of our most cherished national symbols. Some have suggested that the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge is in Baltimore symbolizes the collapse of America in itself. If this is true, could it be possible that the destruction of this bridge was some sort of a warning for America? The Biden administration insists that the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge was just an accident. Perhaps that's true. But as you can see from the video, the cargo vessel that brought down the bridge had to make a very precise turn in order to hit the support structure that it rammed. Very strange goings-ons. And I was looking up this for like 10 times and I was saying, what, what is it trying to do to turn to, to ram into the column? It turns out that this particular cargo vessel is owned by a company known as Synergy Marine Group called the Dali. The 948-foot vessel was, that hit the bridge is managed by Synergy Marine Group a Singapore-based company with over 660 ships under management around the world, according to its website. I'm sure there's going to be an investigation as to this maritime accident. There is something called Admiralty Law, which has to do with shipping, and they're going to be going to court for this definitely. Now, uh, the Singapore-based company with over 660 ships, the group said the ship was operated by Charter Vessel Company, Synergy Group and chartered by Danish shipping giant Maersk at the time of the incident, which sent vehicles and people tumbling into the Patapsco River. On the official website of the company, they boldly proclaim, proclaim that they are deeply committed to DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, are made integral to the people strategy at Synergy Marine Group very simply because it is the right thing to do and it resonates with the ethos of the organization in building a collaborative work environment. All aboard is the familiar quayside cry that was used to tell passengers and sometimes crew too that they needed to get on quickly as the ship would sail soon and is encouraging inclusive and collegiate tenors are playing in the Global Maritime Forum's All Aboard Alliance. Synergy fully supports the Alliance for a Diverse, Equitable, and Inclusive Maritime Industry, which brings together those industry leaders who are committed to pursuing the DEI journey in building an innovative and sustainable maritime sector, which can, all can be proud of. Is this yet another example where DEI should be spelled die instead? It has also been revealed that the captain of the vessel is a Ukrainian. Okay. Maritime job placement company Baltic Shipping shows the captain of the container ship is a Ukrainian. Is this, could this be a coincidence? That certainly puts a different spin on things, doesn't it? At this stage, we do not know if the Ukrainian's captain was on board the ship at the time of the accident or not. But what we do know is that the ship was involved in a serious accident previously. The ship in Tuesday's crash, Dali, was involved in at least one prior accident when it collided with a shipping pier in Belgium. In 2016, incident occurred as the Dali was leaving port in Antwerp and struck a loading pier made of stone, causing damage to the ship's stern, according to VesselFinder.com, a site that tracks ships across the world. An investigation determined a mistake made by the ship's master and pilot was to blame. Now, but hopefully this latest incident was just another accident. And from what I know, uh, what I read, this ship was not piloted. It didn't have a pilot, a tugboat to pilot it. Now, they, uh, hopefully the latest incident was just another accident, but there are many that are suggesting this sinister for, there are sinister forces at work here. 
For example, Lara Logan is reporting that her sources believe that this was an absolutely brilliant strategic attack, quote unquote. Multiple intel sources, Baltimore Bridge collapse was an absolutely brilliant strategic attack on US critical infrastructure, most likely cyber, and our intel agencies know it. The in information warfare terms, they just divided the US along the Mason-Dixon line, exactly like in the Civil War. In an extended post on Twitter, Logan went into a tremendous amount of detail regarding what her sources are telling her. Make no mistake, this was an extraordinary attack in terms of planning, timing, and execution, she said. The two critical components on that bridge are the two load-bearing pylons on each end closest to the shore. They are bigger, thicker, and deeper than anything else. These are the anchor points, and they knew it that hitting either one of them would be a fatal wound to the integrity of the bridge. Half a mile of bridge went into the river, likely you will have to build a new one, also caused so much damage to the structural integrity of the bottom create, uh, concrete part that you cannot see and won't know until they take the wreckage apart. Structural destruction likely absolute. Attack perfectly targeted. They have figured out how to bring us down. As long as you stay away from the teeth of the US military, you can pick the US apart and were arrogant and ignorant, lethal combination. Obama said they would fundamentally change America, and they did. We are in the free fall ride on a roller coaster right now. No brakes, just picked up, picking up speed. The footage shows the cargo ship never got in the approach lane in the channel. You have to be in the channel before you get into that turn. Location was precise and deliberate chose a bend in the river where you have to slow down and commit yourself. Once you are committed in that area, there is not enough room to maneuver. Should have had a harbor pilot to pilot the boat, you are not supposed to traverse any obstacles without the harbor pilot. They chose a full moon, so they would have maximum tidal shift, rise and fall, brisk flow in the river on a normal day, and have had a lot of rain recently, so water was already moving along at a good pace, hit it with enough kinetic energy to knock the load-bearing pylon out from under the highway, which fatally weakens the span, and then 50% of the bridge fell into the water. All these factors, when you look at it, this is how you teach people how to do this type of attack. There are also so few people left in the system who knew this. We have a junior varsity team on the field, Tremendous navigational obstruction, huge logistical nightmare to clean this up. And she makes a lot of good points. Even if a group of terrorists had planned on, to purposely bring down the bridge, it would have been extremely difficult for them to do a better job. On the other note, now the end begins is pointing that out that Netflix disaster movies entitled Leave the World Behind featured cargo ships that caused chaos by sailing off course. On November 22nd, 2023, the official launch of the movie Leave the World Behind that was produced and co-written by Barack and Michelle Obama happened. The first thing that happens in that movie is a blackout of mobile device service. Exactly three months to the day later on February 22nd, 2024, for 13 hours, America was in the grip of an unprecedented and unexplained disruption of mobile device service. The second thing to happen in the Obama movie was the shocking appearance of cargo ships that sailed off course, causing mayhem. Today in Baltimore, a foreign cargo ship rammed into and wiped out the massive 1.6 mile long Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland. That's two for two coincidence. You can't see a brief clip of, uh, you can see a brief clip of the cargo ships in the trailer for the movie right here in the link. As this, uh, is this a case of life imitating art or art imitating life? General Flynn is using the term black swan event to describe what just happened in Baltimore. And he seems to think that terrorists may have been involved, but we shall see. But in any event, I think that it is quite strange that out of all the bridges in America, it was one named after the author of the text of the US national anthem that was hit. If the bridge was meant to represent America, I think it, it, that it is a very bad sign that it just collapsed. 
And in less than two weeks, the Great American Eclipse of 2024 will complete the giant X over America that the Great American Eclipse of 2017 started. That eclipse will take place uh, April 8. There are many that are mocking the long string of coincidences that we have been witnessing, but they're the ones that should be paying attention most of all. And this is by Michael Snyder on End of the American Dream. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Michael's new book entitled Chaos, available in paperback and for Kindle on Amazon. And you can check out his new Substack newsletter right here. About the author, Michael Snyder, extremely controversial new book, Chaos, available in paperback and Kindle on Amazon. He's also written seven other books in a uh, available on Amazon, including End Time, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work that he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes them by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream, The Most Important News, and he always freely and happily allows others to republish those articles on their own websites. You can connect with Michael on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter and share his articles on your own social media accounts. It's definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge to you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. I kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.